So in this case I'm completing a 2022 company tax return. I'm importing my Excel file and what does that data look like on the Excel file? It's really just a profit and loss. You can grab the template straight off the download function there. So you get your net profit, you've got your balance sheet, so you'll need to have a bit of an idea as to how to construct your balance sheet and profit and loss with Excel. Once that's in, let's have a look at what we've actually got in here. So we've got a government rebate, interests, trading vehicle because sales and cost of goods. We've got some indirect costs, noting that I've already computed the company tax. We've got some interest, others. Okay, we've got some entertainment. So let's just jump into the form. Actually, before you jump into the form, you need to just double check the classifications. So you've got the classifications here, which should automate if you've got reasonable naming conventions. So if you're using standard naming conventions, then you'll notice that you've got everything mapped in. If you do need to make a mapping change very easily done, just click in, change it, or if it's a loan, you can see there's a loan, and you can then select between current and non-current, if it's just an other loan versus an associated person loan, change it like that. Double check, having a look, noting that that's tagged as non-deductible. So if you've got anything that's non-deductible, tag it accordingly. You'll notice that we've got tags in here that allow you to tag anything uh, with relevance to the tax forms, which will help you fill the tax forms. So once that's all filled or classified, we'll open that company tax return. Um, you've got your front page details. I'm not going to focus too much on that. I'm just jumping straight into the data. So you'll notice the data is classified in. We've got interest. Now, something with in interest, dividends, partnership and trust distributions is it is necessary to come into the form. You'll notice that you've got the value that's come out of the financials, but you do also need to put in the value from from a tax perspective because that's not necessarily in there. You'll notice then I've got no variance and you don't want a variance from uh, between your tax facts and your accounting facts with respect to uh, interest, dividends, partnership, trust distributions, though there may be cases where there are variances because the tax value is different to the accounting value. You've got your reconciliation section here, which will take care of calculating the difference between the accounting profit. So here we've got our accounting profit, and that's mat uh, matching with these reconciling items down to the taxable profit or income there. So just noting what gets treated as non-deductible. So it's treating superannuation as non-deductible. The temporary full expensing depreciation is non-deductible. That's super payable, so it's on the liability side of the balance sheet for 30 June 2022. Non-deductible, super not paid at the end of the year, not deductible. Entertainment, in a lot of cases, is not going to be deductible, so you can see this is just sort of added back as non-deductible. Um, and then you've got your calculated decline in value. So this calculated decline in value is all done through the depreciation module here. And you can see here that um, we've got we've got the calculated decline in value, which is the temporary full expensing. So this is all filled. You've got other deductions, which is your super payable for 30 June 2021, which is a comparative year. So if I went back in here and had a look, you have a look in the balance sheet, and you'd see that we've got we've got our superannuation payable for the prior year becoming deductible and the super liability for the current year not deductible because it's not paid yet. So let's go back to the form. You can see it's easy enough to move around in here. Um, something that we have in here and you might have with uh, with company from time to time is dividends. right? So a dividend has been paid and you can see that the dividend is paid through the equity section with what's essentially a debit the debit activity or transaction there, either with the credit side going to the bank or the credit side going to the director's loan account. And what I need to do is I'm just showing you here that we do have inside our 
share register the ability to process that dividend. So let's process that dividend. It'll calculate the dividend franking values if you set it to 100% franked. So that's going to be 10,000. Um, we set that to 30. 06 2022 and select the members so it'll apply that across both or all the members that you've got and there is another training video that you can see for managing and working with uh, building out your share register but I'll apply that so that will then show up in the tax form so we're back in our draft tax form we have a look in the financial information that's going to the ATO and you can see here there's frank dividends paid the dividend and interest schedules are auto-filled. Now this won't work unless obviously you've set up your, your share register correctly and have the names of your shareholders in there, which I have. And as I said, that's in a separate video. But anyway, that's taken care of filling in the values for the dividends. Depreciation in this case is brought in automatically um, from also over here depreciation so if you use our depreciation module it will bring the values into the tax form so that was uh, temporary full expensing calculated out the tax calc the tax liability 17786 now if you do have installments paid through the year you do want to process those in Noting, noting in this case how I've dealt with that fourth quarter. So the fourth quarter is not paid. It's actually a liability, but I've actually introduced that liability into the accounts. Now you saw I did this all on an Excel spreadsheet, but if we come down here and have a look, there's the PAYG installment for that fourth quarter, still outstanding. But overall, 13896, 13896 is the final liability that's typically how you want it to show if you can. So 13896 is the final liability, but the actual tax, the tax liability is 17786, which would show up in your profit and loss account. And if we wanted to have a look at that 17786, there it is in the profit and loss, 17786. So I did calculate that before I put it all in here, right? So just know that it, you, the way that I essentially did it is I used the tax forms to do the calculation of the tax liability. Then I went back to those accounts, put the values in, and then re-imported the data. So very, imp very easy, sorry, through financials, just to import over the top. So if you make a change in the data set, which is that in, that, in this case an Excel file, simply remember to save it on your desktop or your download folder, and then just import it again. And any changes that are in that file will be brought in and will reflect in the tax form. So if we go back into that tax form, we've got all of our financial data in there, um, depreciation in there, tax calcs in there. Don't forget to do your validations, clear out all your errors if there are any, and then you can complete and proceed to lodge. Now something I didn't point out, which I need to, is that these PAYG installments, if there are PAYG installments, you can use this button here to import those activity statement values directly from the ATO into Logit. So as long as you've connected the system, whatever installments have been paid, you can bring them in. Now noting that these are the only ones that were paid within the year. And what I also did is I put those into the franking account. So there is a franking account in here. And you can see those three installments because only three were paid before the end of the year. And then the dividends paid. Now, noting that the dividend payments, uh, the franking component exceeds the credits and therefore you end up with a debit balance, which is not something you typically want. You'd want to make sure you're paying dividends um, with, with having the correct amount of installments initially or having having enough franking credits to pay out of. But anyway, this is just um, for an example, so bear that in mind.